Scientific Fraud. Let's take a look at Nebraska Man. Have you ever heard of Nebraska Man? Oh, God. Listen to this story. Nebraska Man was found in Nebraska in 1922 by Harold Cook. And it was a major discovery. But what was it that they found? It was one single tooth. Did, did you hear that? Let me underline that. Oh, my God. Nebraska Man was one single tooth. That's all they had was a tooth. All right. Now, men have 32 teeth in their head. They found one. One tooth. Okay. Now they're going to make a Nebraska man out of it. I kid you not. <clears throat> you can't make this kind of stuff up. Professor Henry Osborne of the Natural History Museum in New York, in a speech to the American Philosophical Society of Philadelphia on April 28th, 1927 opined that Nebraska man was the earliest fossil man ever found in North America, and consequently it belonged to an ape, an ape man, according to the experts. Oh my God! Let me write, let me underline that. Experts, a single tooth, earliest fossil man in North America. Now, while it was only one tooth, imaginative scientists put the tooth inside a skull and the skull on a skeleton, and then dubbed him, <laughs> see if I can pronounce this now, Hesperiopithecus Harold Cookie. <laughs> hey, you can't make this kind of crap up. <clears throat> let, me, let me spell this for you, children. It's spelled H-E-S-P-E-R-O-P-I-T-H-E-C-U-S. Hesperopithecus Harold Cookie. H-A-R-O-L-D-C-O-O-K-I-I. -I. Now, doesn't that sound impressive? <clears throat> well, I'm impressed. One professor said the tooth was worth a million dollars. Nebraska man's picture appeared in the Illustrated London News on June 24, 1922, with him sitting around his cave with his wife. Now, wasn't that some deduction? They produced the likeness of Nebraska man and his wife from a single tooth. Isn't it amazing what scientists can do with the cooperation of the media? Now, when you and I pick up our Sunday paper and we take a look at the, you know, the, the sections in the middle and, and we read these stories, we believe them. They're in print. They're put out by people like Harold Cook. I, you know, Harold Cook. And, and they tell us this is the earliest fossil man. They hang a label on it. They call it uh, Hesperiopithecus. Harold Cook, I. and you and I are duly impressed, and we see the picture of this guy sitting outside his cave with his wife, you know, wearing his uh, loincloth or whatever, and we believe that because we believe that science has all the answers. Science is knowledge. Now, I want to remind you, what do these guys have? They've got one tooth. Got that? One tooth. Now, I remember a little earlier we talked about an Edsel. Remember the Edsel where we've got a wheel in the ditch? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and we got a headlight, and then with the headlight and the wheel in the ditch, we come up and we call it a 1958 Edsel with 76,000 miles on it, driven by a little old lady from Pasadena wearing tennis shoes. Huh? <clears throat> well, that's exactly what they're doing here. Now, if I did that with the Edsel car, you'd say, well, you're a lunatic. Well, excuse me, but aren't these people lunatics drawing up these pictures and come to these conclusions with one tooth? Uh, but you haven't heard the rest of the story yet. What kind of a tooth is this? See, a little later on, we're going to find out that this is a pig's tooth. It isn't even a human tooth. It's a pig's tooth. I mean, this fraud was better than Piltdown Man. Hell, at least with Piltdown Man, they had a jawbone, you know. Sure, it was an ape's jawbone, but it was at least a jawbone with teeth in it. These guys haven't even got the jawbone. All they got is the tooth. They haven't even got the hole where the tooth came out of. All right, now, one professor said the tooth was worth a million dollars. Well, the pictures, the press, and the professors all impressed people, even uninformed Christians. Some of them fled to their churches, clutched to their Bibles, and whimpered unconvincingly about how the Bible is still true in the original languages. But maybe we need to look again at Genesis 1 and 2. Maybe there's something in the gap theory after all. See? 
Now the real problem here is with the religious people. See, the religious people, they don't read the Bible, and they don't know what it says, and they don't understand it. So then the science guy comes along, and he criticizes and ridicules the Bible, and there isn't anybody out there that can defend it. That's the tragedy of it all. The religious people over here can't defend it, and the evolutionary guy, he attacks it with a pig's tooth. Oh, for crying out loud. But then, when they unearthed his skeleton, Nebraska man turned out to be an extinct wild pig. And the newspapers did not give that fact any coverage. Now, you, do you wonder why? Well, Dr. Dwayne Gish wrote of this fraud. <clears throat> and he said, I believe this is a case in which a scientist made a man out of a pig, and the pig made a monkey out of the scientist. Footnote 16. Now, <clears throat> Footnote 16 back here tells us that we're in chapter 18. So let me find chapter 18 here. Here's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let me see if I can give you the citation here. Chapter 18, here we are. <clears throat> now we need footnote number 16. Dwayne Gish wrote this. Evolution, the challenge of the fossil record, page 188. He wrote it in 1986. Okay. Nobody comes along and says, hey, by the way, here's a guy that wrote a book and explained the fraud here that was perpetrated by this wild extinct pig. Well, we say wild extinct pig. We don't know if that pig was wild or domesticated. All we know was that it's extinct. We don't find that type around anymore. Now, in the famous Scopes Monkey Trial back in 1925 in Dayton, Tennessee, Nebraska man was to speak loudly for the defense. Most people are only aware of that trial from a Hollywood production, but the film was riddled with fantasy, falsehood, and fiction. As is usual, Hollywood monkeyed around with the truth. The idea of a legal confrontation was hatched in the inner sanctum of the New York offices of the American Civil Liberties Union. The ACLU advertised in the Chattanooga Times for a teacher to test the state law that prohibited the teaching of evolution. John Scopes was presented by Hollywood as a fearful, surprised defendant. But the facts are totally different. John Scopes was a goat in a sting operation, a legal sting. It's done all the time, just like Rosa Parks was the goat in a legal sting by the ACLU and the NAACP. Rosa Parks did not just get tired one day and sit down on the front of the bus. Come on, let's wake up and smell the coffee here. He was a basketball coach and a substitute science teacher. He wasn't even a science teacher, he was a substitute. And he wasn't even sure he had taught evolution. At a meeting in a date Dayton Drugstore, Scopes agreed to be the defendant, and he tutored two boys in evolution while sitting in the back seat of a taxi in front of the drugstore so he could tell the truth at the trial. Remember, he's a substitute. This is a put-up trial, the Scopes Monkey Trial. It was a put-up deal. Not that it was illegal or unlawful or wrong. A lot of times we, we put on a sting in order to bring a legal issue into court so that we can test it or try it. So that's a common practice or procedure. But when Hollywood comes into the picture, you know, they portray this as something different. That he's just a poor victim being put upon by these religious kooks, which wasn't anywhere near the truth. All right, now Darrow waved the London newspaper with the picture of Nebraska man, and he ridiculed uh, William Jennings Bryan and Christians everywhere. And Hollywood made Brian look like a fool, a crackpot, when the fool and crackpot was Darrow, as the trial transcript shows, especially in light of what we know about ape men in general, and Nebraska man in particular. Now, the Omaha World Herald humorously, although properly, chastised scientists in their February 24, 1928 edition. Hesperiopithecus alias the million dollar tooth has taken another tumble and oh what a bump it got. Instead of being the sole surviving remnant of a noble Nebraska Neanderthal, it turns out to be a grinder from the prehistoric jaw of one of his pigs. Instead of being worth a million, it's worth judging from the price of pork on the hoof today, perhaps all of 30 cents. Now, someone might think that they were unkind, but I think it was apropos. 
Scientists have been getting away with murder, and it's time we call their hand. The Omaha editor did just that, much to the delight of creationists. The Omaha paper continued, It isn't so much the loss of this tooth's fame, which we mourn, as it is the loss of our faith in the infallibility of science. If there is so little difference between a pig's tooth and a man's, that the one may be mistaken for the other for eight years, aren't there infinite chances for error in the identification of the fossilized fragments out of which such an amazingly strange prehistoric fauna has been recreated for us? No one expects scientists to be infallible. We just expect them to be honest. No, no one talks about Nebraska man anymore. He has been buried along with his tooth. No doubt most people think that evolutionists should learn from their mistakes and frauds. But they keep showing up. <clears throat> now, this is a pretty obvious fraud. Now, I did not hear about Nebraska man when I was a kid in high school. So, evidently, that fraud had been taken out of the textbooks. Now, Neanderthal was there. Archaeopteryx was there when I was a kid. And, you know, I didn't know that those were frauds until recently. <laughs> well, I didn't know they were frauds until I read this book. And then I looked at the footnotes, and I said, Oh, my God, you mean people have been writing books about this for years? Well, how come we haven't heard about this before? <clears throat> and that's where this book <clears throat> comes to the fore. It's written by a fellow named Don Boys, D-O-N, B-O-Y-S, easy enough, Don Boys, Ph.D., Ph.D., you know what that means? Piled higher and deeper. Anyway, Don Boys likes the title Ph.D., so he put it on there. And he wrote a book called Evolution, Fact, Fraud, or Faith. And I would ra rate it about my number 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. You know, if I had 10 books on evolution here, which I do, and then I said I rated the Genesis flood number 1, I don't know exactly where I'd put this book, but I'd put it in the top ten. It's that good. And again, it's well documented. So before you write me a letter, you know, and tell me how stupid I am, and how out of touch with reality I am, and how what a Neanderthal I am, uh, would you please check your numbers and check your facts again there, son, because I did check mine. I mean, I got all the footnotes here. I'm not talking off the top of my head. I'm not smart enough to do that. So I've got the book with all the footnotes and the books that that are in here to document these frauds. And so I went ahead and I did my homework, and I want you to do the same. 